So you can see from the slide there that the history of the school is one that is quite exciting. Uh, Lord Harris of Peckham, um, in his own life, uh, a person who um, speaks openly about being uh, dyslexic and, and therefore leaving uh, school uh, early to start a business and, and to do that in, in quite a radical way and wanted to give back to and does this by uh, founding uh, the first academy uh, and then building that to the 52 Harris schools uh, that we have now. We are by design based in London. Uh, Sam Moynihan, as with us all, is very clear that part of our success is because he and we can work collaboratively together in the daytime. I am an executive principal over three schools in, in North London, and I can visit all of those schools in one day uh, and help mentor and coach those people. And Harris at heart, as I say, is a collaborative endeavour, uh, competitively collaborative, but we work hard together to help each other learn. Some of you may have read the work of Michael Young, who talks about the radical things that can happen if you have a uh, community of subject specialists, of experts. And you're going to be hearing from Alex later in a moment when he will talk about um, the sort of the map of our schools and where we exist. And Alex is um, one of our consultants and those subject experts make working in Harris radically different from what it's like in other areas. Harris is a trust of enterprise and of initiatives, and these all transform the opportunities of people from working class and disadvantaged backgrounds. Harris academies are widely recognised as a force for social mobility. We aren't just the best performing, highest performing large trust, but we are the highest performing trust with children from disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, we're immensely proud of that role. Uh, we're immensely proud of the alumni that are now beginning to play in the world and of what we believe our current generation of pupils will go on to achieve. I think I'll just build a little bit on what, um, what Nick's just said about kind of the size of the organisation. You know, I've mentioned we've got 52 schools all across London, stretching from St John's Wood in the northwest right down to places like Orpington in the southeast. And I think what that allows us to do is be representative of the incredible diversity across London and I think one of the things that makes Harris quite an exciting organisation to work with is that you have the opportunity to work with different communities, lots of different people, but also those individual schools, although they're part of a, a really large federation, also have large amounts of autonomy over um, how they design their curriculum and how they work with other schools in the network. So I think that's a real advantage of being here. I think Nick also touched on the fact that we're really committed to social justice and that our mission is to help students from all different backgrounds. And I think that's something that Although when you're looking at this map, you can see huge different parts of, or a wide range of different parts of London uh, highlighted there. What they all have in common is these are all schools in places where kids really need a fantastic education. And they're all places where previously perhaps they didn't have access to that real kind of gold standard that Nick was talking about. And that's really at the centre of, of what we do as, as a federation at Harris. You know, we, we work in areas and we work with schools that really value our help and really value the, what we can add in terms of teacher training, curriculum development and wider support to make sure that all of these schools are at least good or outstanding and that the students that need it most get access to the education that they really deserve. Um, so I think that's all I'll say on location. And if possible, George, I'll just kind of skip ahead to what it's like to be a teacher at Harris and some of the benefits. Um, so. I've split the benefits into two halves. One relates to kind of academy structure and roles and kind of our, our approach to teaching and learning more broadly. And then you've got some kind of other additional benefits on the right hand side. Um, having worked for Harris for quite a number of years now, since April 2018, it, in my experience, the things on the left hand side are, are much more important than the things on the right hand side, although the things on the right hand side um, are a sort of additional bonus. Um, what, what do we offer in that case? Well, particularly thinking about um, ECTs and your current position and why you might like to work for the Harris uh, Federation. One thing that's absolutely crucial is the amount of kind of subject specific training and support we can offer. So 
even as ECTs in your first and second year, we put on additional subject specific uh, twilight training sessions across year one and year two. I think it's uh, six in year one and additional three in year two where you can sit down either online or I think hopefully moving to face to face in the future. And, and have some input by a subject expert. So I'm the lead consultant for history. We've got consultant teams across lots of different subjects in the Harris Federation made up by subject experts who are passionate about their subject, who are incredibly well informed about their subjects, who provide training at, at, a, at a national level. So next week, uh, myself and one of my colleagues are running some sessions at the Historical Association Conference, and we can kind of bring all of that expertise to, to you guys to make sure that you're getting the best, most rigorous, most up to date training and, and specialisms that you can do or specialist support that you can do. Um, that's kind of ECT specific, but more broadly, um, we really do our best to make sure that you're not just developing as teachers more broadly and generically, but you're really developing as subject experts and excellent subject teachers. So we have two conferences a year, uh, one in October and one at February. Uh, in October, there's an opportunity for over two hours of subject specific training led led by myself and my colleagues and other other subject areas and then in february there's a whole day of subject specific training largely tiered at key stage five but you might also have training at key stage four or key stage three or if you're a primary um teacher you also have a whole day of, uh, of primary cpd training there and for example, for my team, we also add in things like knowledge lectures throughout the year. So we get academics and experts in to talk to our network. So we've had somebody like um, Miranda Kaufman, who's a really kind of leading figure in, in history and academia, talk to our network a couple of weeks ago. So there's all these kind of examples of subject specific training and subject specific opportunities to develop knowledge as well, because we really value subjects and we really want you to develop not just as teachers, but as subject experts as well. Where that ties in, and I think another thing that makes us different to other other multi academy trusts is our departments also have quite a large degree of autonomy. So there's not in in history, for example, there's no kind of top down centralized curriculum that people have to teach. There's no kind of dictated lessons or lesson plans that people have to use. We're far more about training people to become experts so they can have autonomy and ownership over their own curriculums and really teach lessons that they feel really proud of and it's it's part of my role and, and the role of my colleagues in the kind of central consultant team to make sure that people are able to do that um where that ties in as well is being part of a supportive network so you'll be part of an ect network and you'll have those training sessions that i mentioned you have opportunities to network at conferences we also have as you develop in your careers which hopefully you will and you'll go on to be heads of department and subject leaders we meet together with heads of department every half term to do training pitched at a leadership level um, and also to get people together to share best practice and talk about their experiences and just offer that support from people in other schools within the Harris Federation. Um, and all of those things are kind of tied together by by myself and the other subject consultants. Um, we work closely with with staff right the way from initial teacher trainer training right up to to senior school leaders just to make sure that they're getting the best possible experience the best training the best support access to the best knowledge and access to to help and support and resources as and when they need them to make sure that that they're coping and they're managing with things like workload as well so that's why i would kind of work for harris if i was a, a kind of ect starting at the moment Additional benefits, we do have an extra half term or a week of half term in the autumn. So you get a two week October half term, which is really good because that's, in my experience, probably the busiest time of the year. Um, and it's also the time of the year where people are kind of tired, it's cold, it's dark, and people kind of really appreciate a, a bit more of a break at that point. There's things like health insurance programs. We're really um, committed to things like mental health at the moment as well. So there are members um, in my team um, and also in schools that are doing um, the mental health first aid of training as well. We really value stuff like that. And then things that relate to cost of living, because we know that's really important and we know that's particularly important to people starting out in their careers. So there are various schemes like um, retention bonuses that we offer to people. There's things like electric car sponsorship um, and other things that we can do just to show that we're aware of um, how much we value teachers and how much we want to 
not just recruit but retain really good staff and I think all of the things that I've spoken about hopefully show the ways of doing that you know making people good teachers investing in skills and training and expertise and also if we can add a few kind of perks and bonuses to make life a little bit easier also trying to do that as well So if you join Harris Federation as a year one or a year two ECT, you will join our ECF program for your induction period. You are probably aware by now that your induction period will last two years um, or the equivalent if you are part time. So it, it will be extended in relation to your FTE if you are joining an academy as a part time ECT. We're going to start with the year one ECT program because I, I presume that's likely what you're all interested in hearing about as that would be coming up for you imminently. So year one of our ECT program will follow the National Institute of Teachings program as it launches from September 2023 onwards. And I've just had a blurb up there on the screen for you to have a look at so that you can get a sense for what the National Institute of Teachings program can offer you. Although I am going to speak a little bit more about what the National Institute of Teaching is. So, George, if you could go to the next slide. So this is a bit of a complex diagram. I just wanted to show you um, a bit about how this has all come to be and how this is mapped out. In their white paper, and certainly in the change of induction guidance in 2021, the DFE set out its mission to establish world-class centers of excellence when it comes to teacher training and development. And what the DFE seeks to establish is called a golden thread of teacher development. The DFE wants every teacher at every stage of their career to have access to high quality teacher training. And so that starts right with ITT programs through to ECT programs, and then beyond if you're interested in doing NPQ programs, NLE programs, any of the specialist NPQ programs, even all the way up to the NPQ executive head teacher programs. Um, the idea there being that at any point in your career, you have access to high quality training from hubs around the country that are accredited for delivering high quality training. So those hubs across the country have already been developed. There are 87 teaching school hubs across the country that deliver on this golden thread of teacher development. Harris Federation has two hubs. Um, and then the, the DFE more recently, opened up a bidding process for organizations to put together what they believe to become a national institute of teaching. And, and organizations put forth their mission for what this national institute of teaching could look like um, in delivering the golden thread of teacher development. Harris collaborated with three other quite large multi-academy trusts um, across the country. And as a pack of four, <laughs> we, um, we submitted a bid for what we believe the National Insti Institute of Teaching could look like, and we won. So we have already started launching our NPQ programs. And from September 2023, the National Institute of Teaching, Harris being one of the founding multi-academy trusts there, will lead on their ECT program. So it really is a flagship program, but I want to reassure you that as a Harris Federation ECT, you'll be joining a federation that has already been running the early career framework for two years. Um, we've just been partnered with a different provider. So you are in safe hands with us, um, but it is a really exciting opportunity to, to be a part of a real national program that offers um, quite unique incentives that, that I'll talk about in a, in a couple slides in comparison to the other providers. Next slide, please, George. The National Institute of Teaching is what it says on the tin. It's a national program. It's, a, it's an institute that is set up across four campuses in South and West, South East and London, North and West and North and East. It's no coincidence that there were four multi-academy trusts who collaborated on the bid. Um, so it would be no coincidence that each of the multi-academy trusts gets to take a bit of a lead on one of the campuses. Harris Federation is leading on the Southeast and London campus. So when we think about the National Institute of Teaching, you really are also thinking about Harris as one of the four uh, founding multi-academy trusts. Again, I just think it's, it's a real opportunity to be a part of something at a grand national scale that's really exciting. Next slide, please, George. 
but I assume you're here because you want to know what the nitty gritty is, what the ECF program will look like. So there you have it. Um, your year one ECT program will be broken up into six modules. You'll you'll complete one module per half term and each of the modules have been allocated specific teacher standards that you'll focus on. They've been sequenced in a really logical way. For example, in September and October, I imagine the main priority on your mind is going to be to establish yourself in the classroom, to build relationships with your students, to set your routines, to ensure your routines are consistent. So that's what module one is all about. It's all about creating a powerful learning environment. I'm just going to pause for 30 seconds and let you read the other titles for the rest of the modules in year one. The ECF program is built on a spiral curriculum. So in year two, we don't want you to think that you'll be repeating everything you've learned in year one, but what you learn in year one, just as what you've already learned in your ITT programs, it does form the foundations of us as professionals and what it means to be outstanding practitioners in this profession. So as a spiral curriculum, you will revisit concepts from your ITT program and from year one of the, the ECF program, but you'll do that in much greater depth in year two. So, George, if you just click the next button, it should reveal what the year two program looks like. There you go. And again, I'll just leave that there for 30 seconds for you to have a look at the different titles for your six year two modules of study. Lovely. So that gives you a flavor for what you'll be learning about if you were to join the Harris Federation ECT program as a year one and a year two ECT. But now let's talk about how you will be learning it or, or the order in which you'll be learning it or what you'll be expected to do to attend, um, etc. So, George, if you just go to the next slide. So this graphic shows you what year one of the ECT program looks like for teachers by module. Again, I've said there are six modules, one per half term. Um, before I just speak over top, because I can imagine you're you're looking and digesting and reading all of this and, and um, you know, for the sake of working memory, I think I'll stop talking. I'll give you about 30 seconds to just digest the image in front of you before I start talking to it. OK, so the ECF program is delivered to all ECTs in a really blended format. Um, there's a, a combination of synchronous and asynchronous study. So that means you've got some things to do on your own to build into your own busy timetables and, and hectic schedules and, and to carve out time to dedicate to your training, which you will be allocated as a, as a year one ECT. Um, but you've also got things to attend where you can come together and collaborate. I'm going to talk from the top down of this document. So let's just focus on module one as an example. In every module, so every half term, you will have self-study to complete. This is the independent asynchronous part of the program. These are documents that will be put up on the training portal for you to access. In the allocated weeks, you are meant to access them. You read them either in your 10% additional PPA time as a year one ECT or in whatever time suits you best. Um, you can read them on a computer, on a tablet. You can print them, download them, uh, whatever works for you. You will get three documents that are expected to take about 90 minutes. Now, of course, that's a, a real um, flexible approach. 
oh, sorry, there is a real flexible approach to that because perhaps um, it's a concept that you did quite well with in your ITT program and, and your mentor agrees this is something you're you're already doing quite well with. So perhaps you, you engage a little bit less uh, with that self-study. But if it is a topic that's of a particular uh, interest of yours or something you are working on, then you would engage a little bit more. So the flexibility is there for you to decide just th to what extent you really need to invest into this document this time. But you'll get three per module. So that's for you to do asynchronously. But but for the things that you'll get to do with other ECTs or, or with facilitators or leaders across the Federation, those are listed underneath um, underneath the self-study. So every full term, so you can see across modules one and two, a full term, you will have a national webinar with a specialist partner to attend. So this is a one hour focused session. Um, it's a training session led by some names you'll probably recognize. Tom Bennett will be leading the first one. We know Alex Quigley will be leading the, the last one. And we're thinking either um, Cra uh, crazy Daisy Christodoulou or Kate Jones for one of the middle ones. So those might be some names you follow already on Twitter, or you've read about or looked at already in your ITT program. Um, but just to give you a flavor of, of who has partnered with the NIOT to deliver some real exceptional training for you. That will be a national webinar, so it will be online. Um, but the local seminars underneath in those purple boxes are where you really get to come together with other ECTs in person once per half term. ECTs from both your school, but uh, also a range of other schools that are around you that are local to you. And you attend a training session that's led by an expert facilitator. You'll get to share best practice with ECTs, troubleshoot with ECTs, share what you're struggling with, share what's working well, share great ideas. But you'll also get the benefit of an expert um, facilitator, a senior leader, a practicing senior leader in a school um, who can guide you and support you and offer lots of advice. So you have one of those every half term. Next slide, please, George. I won't spend too long here because this is what year two looks like. And for, for some of you that that's quite a ways away um, and it's quite similar to the year one program as well. Your self-study time reduces. So you only have self-study for one hour per half term. But you still have the option to attend those national webinars with the specialist partners yet to be booked. So I can't say any fancy names about those ones just yet. And you will still have the local subject seminars um, every half term. The real interest in year two that, that we really like is that in year two, the majority of the training becomes very, very subject specific. So whereas in year one, you would be training with other primary teachers or other secondary teachers in year two, you will be training um, for secondary specifically. You'll be training with other teachers who are in your secondary specialism. In primary, those subject sessions will have a, a real subject focus. So what does maths look at primary? What does literacy look like in primary, et cetera? What underpins all of this is along the bottom. So you can see it on this page here for year two. It's your mentor support. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I think it's it's one of the next slides that are coming up. So George, do you mind progressing on? Perfect. And this one's got some reveals, George. So I, I might just need you to click the button a couple times. Thanks. So just some general highlights that, that you'll get as an ECT on the Harris Federation ECF program. You will get a dedicated in-school mentor and an induction tutor looking after you and your progress um, across the year, the two years that you spend as an ECT with us. That mentor um, with year one ECTs will be meeting with you to support you every single week. That meeting will be built right into your teaching timetable. As a year one ECT, you get an additional 10% uh, PPA time on your timetable for these kinds of activities like your training or your weekly mentor meeting. So it's built right into your timetables. And then every school has a, at least one induction tutor who's responsible for looking after ECTs and, and things like reporting, which I'll talk about next. Thanks, George. Why don't you re reveal a couple and I'll talk to them. There you go. 
Um, I think I've already talked about the webinar masterclasses. Um, we've got we've got some some big names joining us to deliver on that. So I think that's a real opportunity. They're entirely free, and and I know for certain that if you wanted to go see Tom Bennett speak, um, he he charges. Uh, I believe they all charge. Uh, to go listen to them speak at any of the conferences. So it's it's a good opportunity to see some of these people that you might have been reading about um, for free. We also run local training sessions. So those are your opportunities to network, to collaborate with ECTs, with facilitators from across the program. They really do become your support network. Um, it's our intent that the group that starts out together in September is the group that stays together for the full two years with their dedicated facilitators. So you really do create this um this local network of support and, and you build links across schools you know outside of our federation if you've got non Harris ECTs with you so it's a real opportunity for for networking we also add in an additional and, and Alex was referencing this previously when he was talking about the work that the consultants do we recognized that the ECF while, while it does deliver on a lot of statements that support you in meeting the teacher standards what it really lacks is some subject specificity and so that was something that we we believe is a real strength of our program because Harris Federation has a consultant team of, of subject experts, we've harnessed their expertise to add in additional subject specific training, particularly in year one of the program where the, the training sessions in general are teaching you about the teacher standards, not necessarily what the teacher standards look like in maths or in primary reading. Um, and so we've added in additional subject specific sessions that are delivered by our consultants. So you get that that subject uh, training that we know is crucial. You will also be assigned to an appropriate body. So we at the teaching school hub, um, not Harleen and I, because we deliver on the training program itself, but our colleagues lead on the appropriate body side of things. It is the role of the appropriate body to monitor your progress towards the teacher standards, to support you in your development with the school, and to support the school in making sure that an appropriate induction is provided for you. So you will get an opportunity in September to meet your appropriate body lead, to hear what the appropriate body provides in terms of services for you as an ECT, but it's just another contact that you have in the Federation who you know is looking after you and your well-being across the two years as an ECT. This might answer um, one of the questions that's come up in the chat. So you may also be wondering, how am I going to be assessed? How do I complete induction? What does a pass look like? What do I have to do in order to pass? And so I just wanted to spend some time talking about that. As an ECT, you are assessed against the teacher standards and nothing else. So your pro your progression towards passing or successfully completing induction depends on the extent to which you are delivering on the teacher standards. Um, therefore, we don't require an evidence folder. We don't require you to submit a portfolio. You don't have to make a presentation to us to prove it because the best way for us to know if you're meeting the teacher standards or delivering on them consistently is by your school, your induction tutor, perhaps even your mentor observing you to see that in action, meeting with you weekly to, to monitor your development, reporting on the progress that you are making towards the teacher standards. So to be clear, there is no um, there's no obligation for you as an ECT to compile a folder like you are probably doing right now for your QTS folder, like I know some other schools out there do require their ECTs to do. So I think that that hopefully helps us stand out or is just another thing that helps us stand out. You don't have to do that for us. But what you will have are a series of opportunities to demonstrate that you are meeting the teacher standards um, in a way that is realistic to what your role actually is. Your role is to be a great teacher in the classroom for the pupils that you serve. So in order to, to demonstrate that you're meeting the teacher standards when you do that, um, your mentor or your induction tutor will observe you formally once per half term for every half term of induction. So that will be six formal observations as a minimum in year one and six formal observations as a minimum in year two. In terms one, two, four and five, so that's right before Christmas and right before Easter of both years one and years two, your school induction tutor will be responsible for writing um, a mini report on your progress. This mini report is called a PPR, a professional progress review. It's not something you have to write, don't worry. 
um, but it is going to capture your strengths and areas for development with regards to the teacher standards. So the formal observations feed into that mini report, the weekly support that, that you're getting with your mentor feeds into that report, and you will see that report and have an opportunity to discuss it with your induction tutor um, and leave your own comments and sign off on that as well. At the end of year one and at the end of year two, your induction tutor will then submit a much larger report. This report is really comprehensive. Um, it's a report that they write, you do not. And it's a report that details all of your strengths towards all of the teacher standards, as well as some continued targets or areas for development. Again, you'll have an opportunity to meet with your induction tutor to discuss your progress, your strengths, your areas for development. And you'll have an opportunity to comment on that report and sign off on that report. So you are very much involved in that process. It's, it's not something that you should feel is ever done to you, but it's something that's done with you in collaboration and discussion. So I think that answers the question, is there anything that we should deliver as a result of the self-study? No, your self-study is training. So um, it will be a mixture of theory, which you'll get to read about. There will be scenarios which you'll get to read about, and then there'll be some activities which it suggests that you could try out in the classroom over the next week or two to put some of that theory better into your practice. Because I imagine you're learning quite a lot of theory right now, um, but, but what you might feel like you're lacking is some of those real dedicated hours to practicing it with your own class. Um, so yeah, that that's what your self-study does. You don't have to write reports on your self-study. You don't have to keep evidence of what you're doing for your self-study. You don't have to upload anything for your self-study. It's just work for you to be using in your 10% additional PPA time to make yourself a better teacher. Um, there's a few things that, that, that we can do sort of next steps. If you um, are still looking for a role, we do have a, a wealth of opportunities across the Federation. Um, Really easy to find these. You can simply go to our Harris Career site. Um, once you are on this site, um, it's as simple as searching our vacancies. And you will then be able to filter them down accordingly. When my laptop decides to, to speed up. So all you have to do is you, you can fill in um, these boxes here. Um, so you'll be looking for a permanent role and then you can click on view on list. And this brings up every vacancy that we have uh, across the Federation. Um, and on the left, you can filter it down by different areas. Um, obviously, academies, if you know there's any academies in your local area. Um, equally, if there's certain subjects um, that, that, that you're teaching. So if you're looking for a role, an English role, we have a variety of opportunities here as well. Um, the application itself is quite a short application, very much your basic basic details, um, education and employment history uh, and the CV and cover letter. Once that is submitted and you if you're applying for multiple roles, it will copy that across to other applications as well. So you don't have to complete new applications every time and the majority of the information will pull across as well. If there aren't any current roles available it isn't anything to worry about um i obviously have been sending out emails emails to everybody on this call and i am more than happy to work with you directly um if there are certain academies that do interest you but they don't have current vacancies all i'll really need to know is the subject or, or key stages that you're wanting to teach if you are primary where you're based and a CV um, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll get in touch with you and we'll we'll have a chat about you know what you're looking for and I will then work with our head teachers as well um, there is still time to secure a role obviously we the deadline for teacher resignations is the 31st of May so any roles that are still available after that date we can definitely um, get some interest to to our head teachers if you are looking for a post as well um, so all a really friendly, friendly sort of experience and we can look at setting up initial visits to academies if you're unsure um, or equally just, you know, a phone call with, with a head teacher if you've got any questions as well. And we are quite transparent with that as well. 